Now, the purpose of this video is to show you how to use some dedicated effect slots in Reaper, assuming you want to. As you'll see, you don't really need to, but it could be helpful keeping things neater and using very specific actions. So the project set up here with a bunch of tracks. This track has a saturation plugin on it, along with a gate, compressor, and an EQ. This track has just an EQ. This one has a compressor and EQ. This one has saturation, gate, and compressor. And finally, this one is just a gate and an EQ. And we can see this a lot easier in the mixer, right over here. Here's all the plugins, saturation, gate, compressor, EQ. And you can see by default, Reaper doesn't put these into slots. They just appear in the order you place them, which again, it's not really a problem unless you want to use some specific actions. Like if you're using the SWS extensions, let's open up our actions by hitting the question mark and we'll search in the filter, assuming you've installed the SWS extensions, SWS toggle effects bypass. And we can see some actions over here that are going to toggle our effects based on the number or slot of the effects. And like I said, Reaper doesn't really have slots, but you can fake it with these actions. So if I select all the tracks and choose any of these actions, let's use effects one, double click it, and notice everything in row or slot one is now bypassed. But obviously, that's not very useful if there's different plugins on each track, with a saturation, EQ, and compressor being completely different. There's no real point to bypassing all of them together. And the same with effects two, effects three, or effects four. And there's actions for up to eight. Or we could toggle all of them right here. But to make this more useful, we could add some dummy plugins in here that don't take up any CPU resources, but just fill up our slots. So I'm going to click right here and choose a container plugin, which we're not really going to use for anything besides a dummy plugin, as it won't take up any DSP processing. I'm going to rename it by hitting F2, just use a bunch of dashes, and now it shows up like this. Let's duplicate it by dragging it around to fill up these slots, and then put them in the correct order, matching this. So our EQ will go at the end on both these tracks. The compressor goes here, the EQ, and the gate goes here. So now all the same plugins are on the same slots or in the same rows. So now if we use those same actions, it's going to be more useful. If we toggle effects one, just these effects are now bypassed. So we can bypass all the saturation plugins on all the tracks at once. Unbypass them, do the same for our gates, our compressors, or the EQs. So it's a lot more useful using those actions if these plugins line up like this. And if you want to add a saturation to this one, just delete this one, hold on the PC, option on the Mac, and drag this one over. We'll do the opposite if we don't want to use this plugin and drag a dummy plugin over. So now we have a few different options when creating new tracks. For example, we could start with all dummy plugins like this. Let's delete this one, duplicate it over, go to the effects on this track, right click and choose effects chains and choose save all effects as default chain for new tracks. And if we choose that, let's delete all these tracks. And if we create new tracks, they're all gonna start off with the dummy effects in those slots. So if we wanna use our saturation, just delete one, move this over, wanna add a compressor, do the same thing, or we can just right click in any slot and choose to replace an effect. And then just add any plugin you want. Or we could start off 
with this effects chain instead. Open this effects, right click, choose effects chains, and save all effects as a full chain for new tracks. And now, if we delete these tracks, when we create new tracks, they're all going to start off with these plugins on there. And then we could use dummies if you want, but we could use those SWS actions to toggle each row of effects like this for saturation, gating, or compressors, or EQ. So by doing it this way, it's a bit more organized than having different plugins in any order on the tracks. But like I said, you don't have to do it this way. In fact, if we go back to the original project, like this, assuming we're using the same effects on each track, the same EQs, compressors, gates, or saturation, we could also do it this way. Go to the View menu and choose Project Media Effects Bay, which opens up this dialog, and we could choose the Effects tab, which shows all the effects in our project. And like I said, using the same type of plugin for each, for a compressor, EQ, gate, and saturation, we can bypass it right from here without changing the order of our plugins. So if we want to bypass all the saturation, just right click, choose to bypass it, and all those plugins that we're using for saturation are bypassed. They may not show up in the same row, but those plugins are still going to bypass. And we can unbypass them the same way, or put them offline or online from here. And do the same with our gate to bypass all the gates, all the EQs, or all the compressors. And like I said, with this method, you don't need to line up all your rows, but it's only going to work if you're using the same brand of plugin. If you're using different compressors, they're going to show up in different columns over here. But this is another way we could do this if you don't want to do it with dummy plugins. Although this tends to look a bit neater. If you prefer all the same plugins in all the same rows, we could trigger it from these actions. For effects one, for saturation. Effects two, for our gates. Three, for compressors, and four we used for EQ. And with this method, we could use different brands of plugins, but still using the same plugin type, like saturation, gating, compressing, or EQ, or any plugin type you prefer. And we could bypass them up to eight slots for one, two, three, or four, or do it all from this action. And of course, we can assign keyboard shortcuts for any of these actions. If you want to do it on the fly without having to open the actions list. So that's pretty much it. That's using dedicated effect slots in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.